Welcome back. This is your host Jackal again, and I'm going to now walk you through the Mega Mech interface. So uh, let's begin. So the first thing I want to tell you about this is that this is called the lobby. Here you can see things like where your initial deployment area is going to be. I'm deploying to the southeast and he's deploying to the northwest. This is important to know because we have a house rule on here that we can do one free remap per player. So if you don't like where you start out or you don't like something about the terrain, it's good to know that. So anyway, let's get started. Uh, the way to do this is just say I'm done. And this is what we see. So first we have an initiative role. When we deploy units, uh, first let me sort of reorganize the way this looks a little bit. Okay, that's a little better. So here is a thing called the mini map. And this is actually a summary of this entire map over here. And you can see this little yellow zone here. This is my deployment area. So if I wanted to deploy a mech, I can choose any from this list. Let's say I wanted to deploy this guy first. I just click on him, uh, click in the area that I want to deploy him, and then change the facing by pressing turn, and then deploy. As I'm doing that, I'll show you some other things about this interface that are kind of important. I can right click on any unit on this map and I will get the same information about this mech uh, that I would in the Mech Wars interface. In particular, in this extras tab, there's the ability to turn on various different sensors. By default, this is set to radar, but for this server, it's very desirable to set your sensors to mag scan. The reason for this is that we use a double blind line of sight system in this game where you can only see the enemy units if you have line of sight to them. But these special sensors will actually go through some of the terrain. So MagScan, for example, will go through both trees and on this server through hills. Uh, and the only thing it won't go through is buildings. If you are fighting in a city, you'll need to change it to seismic so that you can see through buildings. Um, MagScan has a pretty long range. Seismic has a very, very short range. So just be aware of that. Now, take a look at this. You see how one of my units is this solid color and the other one is transparent? This means that my opponent can see this mech. And if I look around on the map, I can see a triangle over here where his unit is located. And I can see he's got a hunchback H. If I want to view the stats on that, I can right click on it. And you know, there it's armor, here's its weapons. The Hunchback that many people are familiar with is the Hunchback G that's got an AC-20, but this one's got an AC-10 and uh, it's actually a pretty nice mech. Uh, to move a unit, it's real easy. All you do is you just click where you want to go. You can actually create waypoints if you want to and turn your mech. You press Escape, you can undo the move. Also, let's say you just want to move someplace and then turn. Just press this turn button down here, and that little arrow there indicates that it's going to turn at the end of the move. So let's, uh, let's move quickly since we're pretty far from our opponent at this point. Each of these units has different movement capabilities. For example, my trebuchet here can walk five hexes and run eight hexes. Uh, but we also have some units, like my fire starter here, which have the capability of jumping. If I want to jump, I just pick a location that I want to jump to. And when you jump, uh, you can actually land facing any direction you want to. So, you know, let's say I wanted to face this direction after jumping. I just, let's press escape to undo. I can jump. Say I want to face that direction at, at the end of the jump and then press move and there I go, I've jumped. Now, one of the things that I like to do, as I said, this is a very three-dimensional map that we're fighting on here. And to really get a sense of that, I find it's helpful to turn on the isometric view, which is under the view pull-down menu right here. 
and boom, you see now we've got a much more three-dimensional view of the battlefield. Now, something else I want to point out is as I'm moving, you'll see that these you know, numbers on the ground appear. Uh, these numbers indicate the number of movement points necessary to make the move. And if it's just blue, like it is here, that means I'm, I only need to walk in order to get there. And when it turns yellow like this, that means I need to run in order to complete that move. And as you saw with jumping, it turns red. Now, the reason that's important is some terrains, as you can see, cost extra movement points. And as well, if I take a turn, it costs one extra movement point per hex side that I change. So if I were to run here and turn two hexes, that would be one, two, three, four, five movement points. Whereas if I were to run to here, turn and then turn one more time, you see how that yellow arrow appears? That means that I actually have to run in order to make that movement. So keep that in mind as you are playing this game. It's very important to understand the difference between movement points and the hexes moved. So there is the summary of the end of movement. These are the units. He's actually got some tanks, it looks like, that had to make some maneuvering rolls. We'll explain that later, but that's just a summary of all the piloting roles that occurred during the turn. And now it's our opportunity to fire. And by default, this also happens in alternating turns. We can see what weapons he fires. You know, we'll get some attack arrows for that. Looks like he's deciding what he wants to shoot. There we go. Something I should mention is Mech Wars has a lot of tooltip pop-ups that you can use. For example, you can mouse over a unit to see how it moved. Here you can see the trebuchet. It says move R8 plus three. That means it ran eight hexes for a plus three defense. We'll explain that a little bit more in the tutorial section. But you can also mouse over attack arrows. Here you can see this guy is firing two LRM-15s and the target numbers for those are 12. Now here's how I fire weapons. If we want to attack with a different unit, we just keep on pressing next unit. And of the units I've got here, pretty much everything's got short range except for my Scorpion, uh, which has a PPC. When we're in fire mode, by default, it's gonna open up this weapon tab, which is convenient. You can see in here what the different weapons are, and you can also see what their ranges are. So let me size this window a little bit. My PPC has a range of 6, 12, 18, and also a minimum range of 3. If I want to see how far away targets are, I can press the Alt key and click on a hex, and then Alt click in another hex, and it will show me the distance between those two hexes. Uh, I've got an opponent who's just 18 hexes away. That's great because that's the maximum range of my PPC. And here's probably the fastest way to fire weapons. Just click on the weapon that you want to shoot with and then just keep pressing next target. And what it will do, as you can see, is cycle through the targets that are available. And right down here, it will show me what the two hit number is. Anything over a 12 is an automatic miss. The higher the number is, the more difficult the shot is. And actually summarized right here is the actual percentage chance that I'm gonna hit. Now, 8.3 is not a very high percentage, but it's also a weapon with unlimited ammo, so I'll take a shot with it. And I'll shoot at this trebuchet guy. And boom, there it is. And none of the rest of my units are in range, so I'm just gonna press done and, and go through them. When I do so without firing any weapons, I get that pop-up showing me, essentially asking me to make sure that's what I want to do. And we'll just wait a little bit longer for him to finish his shots. At this very long range and with these very high target numbers, it's unlikely that we're going to hit much of anything. 
but we'll see here in a second. Actually, uh, it looks like my opponent hit me. Uh, here's the damage that's resulted. Nine missiles hit me. Five points of damage were done to the left torso and four points were done to the right torso. If I press done, we'll now go through the heat phase. I'm gonna explain the heat phase in just a second here. But on my next turn, I'm gonna be able to see you know, that damage that was done. So here you can kind of see this, this, these two green bars. Uh, these sort of track the amount of damage that this mech has sustained. Uh, the top bar is the armor, and the second bar is the internal structure. This, these bars will change color as, as damage begins to increase, but we can also see more detailed damage by viewing the units or selecting the unit, whichever one you want to do. Uh, and then going to armor. And as you can see right here, you can see the damage to both the left and right torso. Now, here's something that I want to point out um, that's very important about weapons fire in this game. When you move or when you shoot in this game, particularly with mechs, you accumulate heat. Right here, I have built up a certain number of heat points in this battle. When, when you jump, you generate one heat per hex moved. When you walk, you generate just one heat. And when you run, you generate just two heat. Now, this mech jumped six hexes, which is why I have six heat right now. This number in the parentheses after it is the number of heat sinks that I have. If I produce less heat in the turn than the number of heat sinks that I have, I dissipate it all in that turn. But if I go over, uh, I'll start to build up excess heat, which I'll have to uh, get rid of the next turn. So I'm going to actually fire, I'm going to fire three of my medium lasers here. You can see medium lasers produce three heat, flamers produce three heat, and machine guns actually produce zero heat. So uh, let's fire three of these medium lasers so we can build up some extra heat and you can get some sense of that. So there it went. And as you can see, the heat buildup is 15, 12. And I'm not going to go too much in detail in heat in this video, but you can pretty much go safely up to four excess heat without any causing problems to your own mech. The only problem is you will need to dissipate uh, whatever excess heat you have the following turn, or it just keeps on building up. Okay, so now um, we're on to the melee phase. I only have one unit that can melee. The fire starter could theoretically punch this guy, but since he used arm weapons, he can't. Uh, so uh, only the Vulcan can. In order to attack this target, I say I want to target the Brutus, and then I have the option to kick here. Since tanks are only one level high, whereas mechs are two levels high, so I can't punch it, but I can kick it, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Kicks have got very good target numbers compared to guns. Uh, as you can see, my target number for this guy is only a five. And there I kicked him in the turret and actually caused it to jam, so that's pretty good. A battle can go until you reach victory conditions. It's much more common, though, for one side or the other to surrender long before the victory conditions kick in. So I'm actually going to surrender to my opponent here. Uh, here's how I do it. Say I want to surrender. And if he agrees to it, uh, he can then type forward slash victory, which he just did. and the way that I accept the defeat is I type forward slash defeat. And then we just keep pressing done until we're out of this. And I think it may have actually accepted it. It did. So I close this window out. And right down here, I can see the outcome of the battle. I can see which units survived, I can see the money that I earned. You will earn some money even when you lose, you earn much more money when you win. And I also gain some influence. And that right there is a basic run through of a battle in Mega Mech.